Hey, I'm John Cannell, and today on Preppy Kitchen, we're making the most delicious Swiss roll ever. So let's get started. First off, set your oven to 350, nice and toasty. We wanna separate four large room temperature eggs, and it is important to not get any yolks in the white. So, separating these into two separate bowls, one at a time. My yolk goes in one bowl, and the egg white goes in another. You can use a hand mixer for this, by the way. You don't have to use a stand mixer. I'm very proud of myself for not mixing this up. You know, if we're separating egg whites into a bowl, we're gonna be whipping them up into a delicious meringue, and that meringue has millions of little bubbles in it, which will expand and puff our cake up. Grab your stand mixer and a whisk attachment, or your hand mixer if you're doing that, and we're gonna add a quarter cup of granulated sugar and whip this on high for about five minutes. That'll puff things up really nicely. Sugar goes in, mixer increased to high. While that mixes up, grab your 12 by 17 inch sheet pan, add some butter to the bottom, doo -doo -doo. add some parchment paper right on as well. And we're also gonna grease the parchment paper. We wanna release really nicely with this and not have anything sticking. Buttery fingers, but that's okay. This is a really beautiful peak right now. So stiff, really nice. This is gonna get folded into our batter and make everything lovely. But for now, set this aside. It's time to deal with the egg yolks and the rest of the stuff. <laughs> the stuff. <laughs> it's time to deal with the egg yolks and our remaining ingredients. <laughs> stuff. Now to my egg yolks, I'm adding in the remaining half cup of sugar. That's 100 grams a quarter cup of vegetable oil, I'm guessing that's 60 mils, a quarter teaspoon of salt, in you go, a little contrast, two teaspoons of vanilla for a little bit of extra flavor. We're gonna whip this up for two minutes until it is light and fluffy, and then we'll add the remaining ingredients in. You wouldn't wanna add the flour in right now because it would overmix. <laughs> Pop that on, two minutes on high. That looks great, a beautiful light pastel lemony color. Now, I'm just gonna measure this out in a separate bowl. You could dump it in if you wanted to. I want half a cup or 60 grams of all-purpose flour. I would have used so much flour if I just scooped it up like that because this quarter cup scoop scooped um, 48 grams. <laughs> That's crazy. Anyways, I also want a quarter cup or 25 grams of cocoa powder. Oh, <laughs> I'm using I'm using Dutch process, which is beautiful, dark, and has a fudgy color and texture to it. You could use natural cocoa powder if you wanted. Finally, to help our egg whites out, half a teaspoon of baking powder. So what I'm gonna do now is sift this into the bowl directly. You always wanna sift things like this because cocoa powder is so lumpy, it just is. There's a lot of fat in it and it just tends to clump. I'm gonna mix this on low until it's just combined. If you went high, cocoa powder everywhere, a mess. You're coughing, don't do it. While that mixes, grab your egg whites. We're gonna fold this in and make the most amazing cake ever. I haven't even told you, this is one of my all-time favorite cakes. It's so light and creamy, but rich and decadent and soft and amazing. You're gonna lose your mind, gonna lose it. So every year for my birthday, I have my mom, if she's in town, make me a basic, not decorated version of a Bush to Noel. So it's the Bush to Noel recipe from Christmas, and we just do it plain, and it's my birthday cake. Maybe some raspberries or strawberries on the side. It's basically a Swiss roll. It's like an ultra, like a slightly different Swiss roll, uh, because a Swiss roll is filled with whipped cream, and the way my mom makes my birthday cake, it's filled with whipped cream flavored with espresso powder. So it's a like coffee whipped cream in the middle. Ah, oh, it's so good. This, is fudgy and amazing, I'm gonna fold the egg whites in in several batches. The first batch is sacrificial. You will lose so many bubbles, but it'll really lighten the mixture up. So three batches, plop that in, and we're gonna fold, which means you're scraping the bottom down and then cutting through the middle and repeating that. So you're basically mixing gently so you don't pop all of those meringue bubbles. But like I said, you're gonna pop a lot of them in this first batch. The first batch is sacrificing itself, so the next batch can go forward and maintain its light texture. And you wanna mix until you see almost 
no streaks of white. So it'll take a minute or two of folding, but it's really relaxing and it's kind of mesmerizing. So you can see it really disappears. It's cut through the middle and you're breaking this massive cloud into little beautiful floating islands of meringue. This cake just disappears into your mouth and all of a sudden you're like, oh my gosh, it's all gone. What happened? I don't know what happened. That's basically all folded. Look at this, see? It's like a steady drizzle almost. It's really gotten more slack and there is so much more volume to this batter. Transfer this to your prepared pan. Look at that. Now use an offset spatula to gently spread it out to the edges. And yes, it's like paper thin, but that's fine. This is almost the trickiest part because you really wanna make sure you have a nice even layer. So try not to have any hidden mounds. This bakes up so quickly, there's really no time to self level in the oven. This paper thin layer is ready to go into the oven 350 for 12 to 15 minutes or until that center is springy to the touch. In you go. While our cake's baking, grab a smooth kitchen towel, not like a terry cloth one with a ton of texture, and we're gonna dust it pretty generously with cocoa powder here. This is what we're gonna roll the cake up in, so don't choose your very favorite fancy kitchen towel because cocoa powder is not the easiest to get out. <laughs> Just dust, dust, dust. If you've ever made a roll cake, you know we roll either usually in powdered sugar, but for a chocolate one, we're gonna roll in cocoa powder. Okay. And now all you have to do is wait. I will tell you in the next step, you gotta move quickly. You cannot do half measures. You're gonna confidently plop that cake right onto here with like one motion. Don't try and do it halfway because then you could break the cake or no, just bloop. be confident it'll all work out. It might be a little bit messy, so wear an apron. Okay, my cake is out of the oven. So, so amazing the smell. But no time to talk about that. Grab a little knife and run it just along the edge to make sure nothing's stuck. And now, <laughs> I can't touch this, it's burning hot. <laughs> no. This baked for like 12 and a half minutes, by the way. If you over bake your cake, it will crack when you roll it. And that's sad. Okay, so here's the moment we talked about with confidence and joy in your heart, but then it stuck, <laughs> it's so hot. So now pry this up. I just got these sheet pans. They're really, really nice, but they're the heaviest things I've ever lifted in the kitchen. Okay, there we go. Lift that paper off the top. Amazing. Starting at the short end, we're just going to roll this up. So roll, roll, roll. Tight, but not too tight. You don't want to like crush the cake. You just want to roll it out. And now it's going to set. And as you know, cake will firm up a bit as it cools. So while this is rolled, it'll come to room temperature slowly and it'll remember its shape. It'll have cake muscle memory. Then we can unroll it roll it back up. It'll be a beautiful, delicious, amazing spiral. And to help things along, just pop this onto a wire rack, and that way it has a little bit of airflow underneath. This needs to cool for about two hours. Towards the end of that, we'll make our whipped cream and ganache. I'll be back with editing. Ah! No, 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 no. I'll be back with the magic of editing. <laughs> oh dear. It might have cracked a little bit <laughs> when it fell. So I did make a new batch of batter. I just want to tell you, it only took 10 minutes to make the whole batter when I was just like trying to hurry and not talking to camera. So if you ever wondered like, hmm, this looks nice. How long does it actually take? 10 minutes just to make it if you're just going. And then I can still eat the other one. It'll just be. A secret cake. A secret cake. <laughs> cake number two is basically cool. So right now we're gonna make our filling and the ganache at the same time and assemble this cake. It's so quick and easy. One and a half cups or 360 mils of cream, heavy whipping cream, mind you. One teaspoon of vanilla. And a quarter cup of powdered sugar. 
mix this up, start on low and then work to high. And while that's just getting started, I measured out three quarters of a cup of semi-sweet chocolate chips and half a cup of cream. This is gonna go into my microwave to scald, so hmm, maybe about 50 seconds in the microwave. Don't overmix your whipped cream. Okay, move it up to high. Okay. As soon as my whipped cream starts leaving noticeable trails in the mixer, I'll stop. This is nice, like this is a nice soft, almost right peak. Just finish it off by hand, and that way you know it's gonna be the perfect consistency. The cream should be on the firmer side, but you don't wanna curdle it and turn it into sweet butter. The cream's ready. There we go. That's a nice, like, substantial stiff peak. And we're using powdered sugar because it often has cornstarch in it, which can kind of firm things up a little bit as well. Excellent. That is ready. I'm gonna check my cream right now. 55 seconds in the microwave. My cream is really hot and steamy. I'm gonna pour this over my chocolate chips and just let that stand for about 10 minutes. That's about as long as I need to fill this cake and get it all set up. So it's gonna work out just fine. Carefully unroll your cake. And full disclosure, once again, I sped up the cooling process by putting it outside. It's a really cold day. Look at that. See how that's not cracked? It's just keeping its shape. Beautiful. Who's been eating whipped cream off camera? I have no idea. Hmm. Plop all this cream out. Look how beautiful that is. Oh my gosh. All right. Spread this into a nice even layer. Get it right into the curl on the inside of the cake. We're gonna roll this up now. You wanna be gentle with the roll at the beginning. So, there we go. And we're gonna lift it off like this. Just lift and roll. Just like that. Perfect. You're gonna carefully transfer this onto a wire rack. Now we're gonna get our chocolate ganache together, but just wash your hands first. I'm gonna add a teaspoon of oil in here. If you wanted to, you could use coconut oil. This is this veggie oil. Stir this together, and hopefully it all stirs nicely. Because it looks horrible, it looks horrible, but then look, it's nice and silky and amazing. It just might have a few lumps. While my ganache cools just a bit, it's a little thin right now, I'm using a brush, and as an optional step, just dusting off some of the extra cocoa powder now for the fun part, we're gonna spoon the ganache all over the top. Ooh, look at that drizzle. And just get nice coverage. You can use the back of your spoon for the sides, but um, expect some to drip down. That's just how it works. You can let this set up in the fridge before you slice it, or if you're adventurous like me, try and transfer it while it's wet. Let's see how that goes. <laughs> it's like I do this for a living. <laughs> okay, now it's ready to serve. <laughs> you don't understand how delicious this is. The whipped cream is like a light, beautiful cloud enveloped by soft and silky chocolate topped with that decadent ganache. It is amazing and I'm going to eat all of this. Oh my gosh. Whew. I hope you get a chance to make this recipe and if you like this video, check out my chocolate playlist.